Crowd Tank branch. And uh, one of the tasks that I have is to get people to give us uh, interesting talks based on their research and all kinds of things. And today we are likely to have been uh, to have, uh, have Thales, Dr. Thales Carvalho Resende to give us a topic on uh, the case study that he did. It, it will be, um, it is uh, entitled Assessment of Impact of Climate Variability on Total Water Storage, which uh, also has implications on the management of uh, groundwater. I just want to uh, introduce him for a bit, just a few seconds. Thales is the, is, is the earth scientist, and he also holds an MA in International Affairs and LLM in Climate Change Law and Policy. He has more than seven years of experience in the development and management of international cooperation projects on environmental issues, climate change, and transboundary waters. He has worked in the UNESCO IHP. I just learned he's still within the UNESCO, but another division now. And uh, there he was coordinating uh, and supporting research on capacity development activities, groundwater and climate change, water diplomacy, all those kind of, and international water law. Also, uh, he has done a few studies in, in the African continent, including the one he's going to be presenting today, especially on the Stamprit aquifer system, which is shared by South Africa, Botswana, and Namibia, which was also done in collaboration with uh, Central America and uh, Central Asia, some, some other transboundary aquifers there. He's a Brazilian who is staying in Paris. He likes to say that he's a Brazilian. So I don't know if he thinks we should think he plays soccer or he does play soccer. We'll, we'll hear from him. So with that said, just a few rules for the, for the meeting. The people, everyone should write their name and affiliation on the chat box. This is for registration for attendance purposes. And uh, if you have a question during the, the presentation, you can also write it on, in the chat box. Then towards the, at the end of uh, Thales' presentation, we'll give you a chance to ask. Or we can, if there's enough time, people will have to ask by themselves. We'll give that chance as well. We ask that you switch off your microphones and cameras for the bandwidth purposes. And this uh, presentation will be recorded. So if there's a, someone who would have a problem with that, they must just know it will be recorded. And um, another thing is towards the end of the, the presentation, we will ask, we will ask, we will be launching a poll. So we'll ask people to please just fill up that poll. It's, it's very short, it will take a few seconds. The last thing, okay. No, I did say the important thing is that please write your name and your affiliation in the chat box as you enter, everybody. Uh, right now, then, I would like to hand over to Thales to give us his presentation at this moment. Okay, thank you so much, uh, my dear Quasi, for uh, this introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Excellent. So thank you so much again for, for this uh, uh, introduction really much uh, appreciated and uh, feel very honored to be here uh, with you guys um, talking well uh, about uh, some of the work that uh, we've done um, in in the past so what I'll be presenting here today uh, is a, a joint effort uh, from uh, many many colleagues uh, so I, I will not uh, say that the name of each one because uh, otherwise uh, it will take uh, ages but you will see it uh, at the end of um, my presentation uh, well thank you again uh, quasi for uh, you know uh, saying that uh, I, I'm Brazilian <laughs> I, I, I try to say that because as um, you know groundwater people so there's a geology in it and uh, many millions of years ago we were one no we were together so brazil was uh, uh, together with uh, south africa so that's why it's uh, to to just uh, highlight the, the the ties that uh, we have amongst us okay 
So with no further delay, uh, I'll be so doing this presentation um, focused on um, presenting results of the assessment of uh, the impacts of uh, climate variability uh, on total water storage and um, what e are the implications for groundwater uh, management. Uh, so this uh, research, this work that uh, I'll be presenting focuses on uh, the Orange Senku uh, River Basin. Okay, but uh, before starting, um, let me just give you some, some, some numbers about uh, the, the importance of groundwater. Uh, I, I always try to, to start my presentations with, with this because um, for us groundwater people, it's uh, quite difficult to, to, to make groundwater sexy, I would say, no? <laughs> Uh, people often uh, see us as the, the, the you know, the forgotten people uh, in, 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 in the water uh, sector. So I'll, I'll just uh, briefly show you, and uh, I hope in, in, in your future presentations, you can get some of these to, I don't know, uh, showcase the importance of groundwater, because uh, those who are here, I, I'm quite sure we are all, uh, big fans of uh, groundwater. So imagine if uh, the world's water resources uh, in the whole planet no, uh, is in this uh, 150 liter container. Okay. And then what happens is that just four liters of uh, this container are fresh water. So I, I don't know, Quasi, if you can just um, uh, click. That's it. Thank you very much. So out of this 150 liter container, just four are fresh water. The remaining 146 are seawater, okay? Then if you click again, out of these four liters of fresh water, three are frozen, either on the Earth's ice caps or the permafrost regions, leaving only one lonely liter of fresh water, okay? And then 99% of this lonely liter is groundwater, okay? So then you can see just with this uh, small, uh, this couple of images, how important is groundwater. This means that it is essential to protect and manage groundwater resources effectively. Okay. Then next slide. What is the global context uh, about uh, groundwater? So in, in the media, uh, we have seen in the, a few couple of uh, years uh, ago, uh, many posts uh, saying, well, that uh, the world is running out of water uh, the aquifers are losing the replenishment uh, race. Uh, the aquifers are evaporating. Is this really true? So this was uh, one of the, the, I would say, the elements that triggered uh, this, uh, this research. Um, because we have to be very careful on how uh, the information is uh, presented. And then uh, next slide. Uh, sorry, Quasi, next slide. Thank you very much. Uh, and then, well, uh, in, in some cases, yes, the, the, uh, um, we are seeing uh, declines of groundwater and so on. But uh, to, to, to do, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a very consistent assessment, we need to know what is the relation with climate, no? And it happens that uh, the, the, the Earth's climate has always exhibited what we call natural changes. So natural climate uh, variability. And some factors that uh, influence this natural climate variability are the changes or circulation and overturning in the oceans. So over periods of a few years, uh, for instance, fluctuations in, in the, the sea surface temperature uh, have changed, no? 
And how are these measured? So they are measured through what we call climate indices, okay? Uh, there are many, uh, one of the, the, the climate indices that uh, we all know uh, and we know the best is the El Nino, so El Nino Southern Oscillation, what we call ENSO, but there are also others, um, uh, other uh, climate indices that also uh, ha are very, very important and uh, which are sometimes barely known. And one of these are the Indian Ocean Dipole, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, and Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. And it happens that all these climate indices are often correlated, but it's still very difficult to assess to what extent. So this work is based on trying to find out what are the correlations, no? the possible correlations. Uh, I've just seen a, a message popping up that uh, you might not be listening to me very well. Is, is this correct or can you hear me well? I can hear you very well. Okay. I don't know the rest. Okay, perfect. So I'll, I'll keep going. Thank you very much. So we were talking about uh, these different uh, climate indices. What are these climate indices? So here it's uh, just an example of uh, the El Nino index. Uh, so these climate indices have cycles, no? And these cycles can be of a couple of years, decades, and sometimes even multi-decadal, so for several decades. And these cycles have what we call positive and negative phases. So for instance, here we can see the El Nino Southern Oscillation Index, and we can see that the cycles are of uh, just a couple of years. So this means, for instance, um, let's have a look at the 97, 98 El Nino event. So this is a, a cycle of approximately two years. Then afterwards, after the El Nino, we had a, a, a La Nina. Then this cycle was of around three, four years. And so it goes. So you see, the, 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 it's always changing and there are cycles. So for the El Nino case, just a couple of years. Then another example that we don't really, haven't heard a lot about, which is the multi-decadal oscillation, the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, AMO. And if you see here, the cycles are not of a couple of years, but several decades. So for instance, we can see a, a negative uh, cycle that uh, started in, I would say, the 70s and went through the 90s, so the blue one, negative. So a cycle of 20 years. And then the same, uh, and it, it swapped to a positive phase in the mid uh, 90s. And until today, we are in this uh, positive phase. Okay, so this was just to, 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 to give you a brief intro introduction of what is the context, no? So, uh, bear in mind that the uh, climate has naturally uh, changes and that uh, these changes are measured through different climate uh, indexes. And what was the objective of our study? So the objective of our study was to, to assess the impact of this uh, natural climate variability on a recharge uh, of two large aquifers, which are the Stampret and the Karoo sedimentary aquifers that are in the Orange Senku River Basin. And despite the fact that uh, there's a, a lack of continuous data uh, that allow us 
who that should allow to to support sound uh, groundwater management strategies. No, in our case, we focused on two climate indices. So the El Nino. Remember a couple of years, just cycles of a couple of years, and the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, AMO, which has cycles of around um, 20 years. In this uh, picture, you can just see, uh, the, just to show you the, the, the location of uh, the, the two different aquifers that uh, uh, we, we assessed, no? So the Stampriet, uh, aquifer system, so on, on the north, uh, shared by Namibia, Botswana, and South Africa. And then the Karoo sedimentary in the south, uh, shared by um, South Africa and uh, Lesotho. And so the, the, we, we have focused here on, on trying to, to see what are the potential impacts of a climate oscillation in uh, the in groundwater dynamics in the Orange Senku River, uh, because this has still been largely, uh, not largely um, uh, addressed, no? Um, and it, mostly because there's a, there's a, a, a considerable lack of a long-term continuous data uh, of a groundwater level, uh, which is a very important uh, data uh, that allows us to do such kind of uh, studies. So, what have been? What did, did we try to do? Um, and and then I'll, I'll go to the next slide. Um, we have been try. We 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 used um, satellite data, no, uh, because such data can um, provide us. Uh, a, a, a picture of um, large-scale changes. So here we have to be very careful in the sense that uh, satellites provide, you know, just hints on uh, what is happening. No, uh, satellites cannot be used to assess um, look what is happening locally, but at least it can provide you a, a picture of uh, an overview of what's uh, happening in a larger uh, scale. One of these satellites uh, is, uh, that is used to, to assess how uh, water uh, has uh, fluctuated, I would say, uh, is uh, the, the GRACE satellite. However, this um, GRACE satellite was launched in uh, 2002 uh, and therefore, this means that uh, we don't have data uh, to, for instance, capture sometimes full climate cycles. So, as you see here, it has been there since um, 2002, so around 20 years. And, for instance, we have seen that uh, natural climate cycles, such as the AMO, have cycles of 20 years. So what happens is that sometimes uh, the, 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 the results that uh, the satellites are seeing are just in the, midst, in the middle of a, a, a cycle. And this is something that we uh, tried to do in this exercise. And what we did was to, I would say, go back to the past you know, uh, by trying to reconstruct uh, how uh, groundwater fluctuated. So how it fluctuated before 2002. So it's a sort of uh, going back to the, to the past, no? instead of going back to the future, the movie. So this is what we try to do. Let's see what has happened in the past to see what we can decide for uh, the future. And what was the methodology then that uh, we uh, uh, applied? And then, so we developed a, a, a very, I would say, simple water balance model that uh, was able to reconstruct into brackets. I put it into brackets because, of course, it's, uh, it's uh, just a, a, an overview, no? 
of what uh, has happened in terms of uh, water storage changes from uh, 1980 to 2016. So we ran this uh, model for the Stamprit and the Karoo sedimentary aquifers. And then uh, step two was to validate this model, both with GRACE data, so satellite data, but also, and very important, the few uh, data on groundwater level. Okay, and then the next step was once we, we felt that our model was uh, good enough to uh, re represent uh, the water storage changes, we did a correlation uh, to assess, uh, we did a correlation between the, the, um, the storage changes and uh, the climatic indices. So in this case, the El Nino in La Nina and the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. Okay, uh, so just briefly present to you the, 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 the model. No? I, I will not go into the, the let's say, the, the different equations, uh, but uh, you, you, you can find uh, all the details of, about the model in a, a paper that uh, we, we published uh, two years ago uh, in the Hydrogeology Journal. So afterwards, I, I can give you the, uh, the, the such paper. But uh, basically, what, what uh, I would say the, the added value of this model is that we were able to reconstruct, into brackets again, uh, what happened, what has happened in the um, uh, in these two aquifers since 1980. So this means around 40 years of data. By having 40 years of data, this means that we can capture, uh, you know, several uh, climatic indices. Either they are just uh, of, uh, they have cycles of a couple of years or uh, a couple of uh, decades. Okay, so in, in the next slide, you can find some uh, one of the results, the, the results uh, the, of uh, the, the, the model no? uh, for uh, the Stamprit and the Karoo sedimentary aquifers. And what we can see here is, uh, and I'd like to, to bring your attention to uh, the fact that these two aquifers follow the same multi-decadal trend. What do I mean by that? As you can see there, so there's a, a, a let's say, an increase from 1980 to the late 90s in both cases. So the red line. And uh, since then, uh, a decrease. Again, the red line. Okay, so what we can see here, same multidecadal trend. But if we go inside, we see that they have a different interannual trend. Okay, so these were the, 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 the first results of the model. Then step two, as I said, let's see what happens to see if our uh, model is correct. Let's uh, calibrate or verify with um, data coming from satellites. So this uh, GRACE satellite, which uh, provides data on a monthly basis since uh, 2002. And uh, such data can be um, obtained uh, for, for free um, in a very nice uh, website, which is the GRACE plotter. Uh, you can find it there, it's very simple to use. And uh, I will highly recommend you to, to have a look there just to, to, to have fun. So we did this uh, validation of the model with uh, GRACE data for both aquifers. And what we could see here, it says that since it uh, was uh, launched in 2002, 
uh, we have the, 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 um, we've seen a decreasing trend for uh, both aquifers. So the red line, okay? Then moving to, to the next slide. So validation, no? So what he, we've seen here uh, in this slide is that um, GRACE and the model uh, in both uh, aquifers follow this uh, decreasing trend since 2002. Okay, then moving to the next slide. This time, uh, we, we, in order to validate the, the, the model at another step, on, on another scale, instead of uh, validating it with GRACE, we also saw uh, what was happening with uh, groundwater level data. And same here, we can see that uh, the results were quite good uh, and that the things were fitting well. So once we did this um, validation, uh, so this validation both with uh, satellite data, but also in situ data, groundwater level data, we felt that our uh, uh, model was uh, robust enough to see what was uh, to to start doing these correlations with uh, the different uh, climate indices no so this meant that okay after this uh, validation uh, step we had a model that was able to reconstruct what happened since uh, 1980 to 2016 once we had that okay we did this, as I said, the correlations between the climate indices. And uh, I would like to bring this, the, uh, your attention again to this, um, to, 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 to how uh, this uh, Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation Index has, um, let's say, fluctuated in, uh, in the past. No? So as I said, with cycles of around 20 years, and what we can see here is that there was a change from negative to positive in the late 90s, okay? And then, uh, next slide, please. And then if we see again this picture that I've uh, just uh, shown you, it's exactly where there was a shift uh, in, in our model, no? So before uh, um, the late 90s, so from 1980 to the late 90s, we were in a negative AMO phase in which uh, we had an increasing trend in terms of uh, water storage. And since the, um, the, the, the AMO flipped to a, a positive phase, we have seen a decreasing trend okay again as i said in 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 my previous uh, in the previous slide when it comes to interannual variability we see that you know things uh, move around no that there's a, 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 a also an oscillation in at the interannual level and this is what we uh, try to see uh this time doing the correlation with el nino la nina so as you can see here in this picture we could um we, we selected let's say uh, four um events so which are here one two three four uh which we could also find find them in uh uh, if you can just go to the next slide, please, Kwasi. Thank you very much. Where we could also identify them in that same uh, picture uh, graph uh, that uh, I, I've shown you, no? So one, two, three, four. And as uh, you remember, uh, the 97, 98, um, 
El Nino event was uh, really, really tough. So this was a, a really strong El Nino. And we could see here the different, uh, well, that indeed something happened uh, at that moment and that the model could uh, show that something happened at, at that moment. So with this, uh, I would say that the most uh, significant total water storage uh, changes uh, usually occur when there is a, a, a shift from El Nino to, to La Nina or uh, vice versa. Okay, then just uh, well to, to, to conclude uh, and to bring uh, some, some suggestions, recommendations, uh, what we have seen here uh, through this uh, whole uh, exercise, uh, apologies, I, I had to make it uh, short and uh, not going really deep into the details, but I guess uh, we, we, we don't have much time for that. So my, my apologies then, uh, if you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to ask. Uh, but from, from, from the different slides that uh, I've shown you, what we have seen is that uh, the, the, the shallow aquifers in uh, the, the orange Senku uh, basin are uh, highly responsive to, to rainfall, no? Uh, because, well, uh, usually the La Nina years bring much more uh, rain than uh, El Nino, no? So often uh, in, in Southern Africa, El Nino is correlated to uh, droughts, no? And uh, basically what we, ha we have seen here is the total water storage changes in uh, the, the Orange Senku uh, River Basin are uh, correlated to changes of phases of climatic uh, indices. And both at the uh, interannual scale, so a couple of years, so that's uh, El Nino, La Nina, but there's something more important that comes behind that, which is the multi-decadal uh, oscillation. So this, uh, for instance, uh, the, the, the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. And, and so just keep the, 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 the image of this, uh, uh, let's say, V-shape uh, that I, I showed you. No? So from the 80s to the late 90s, the increasing and then decreasing. But in this decreasing trend, there was this uh, interannual oscillation that was driven by um, uh, El Nino. And I, I would say that uh, when it comes, uh, why this, uh, this, um, this research work uh, can, can be interesting for the future is that it can uh, you know, provide some uh, important inputs for uh, policy. Uh, but for that, um, uh, I guess there, there's a, a main message that I would like to bring here is that uh, uh, us as a groundwater people, we, we really need to, to see and work together with uh, the colleagues in the different meteorological agencies in order to, to better understand uh, the, the different rainfall patterns. No? So this is really, really important because, well, we have seen that uh, usually um, aquifers and especially shallow aquifers where most of the water is, uh, is taken from are highly responsive to, to rainfall. No? And by having this uh, strong link with uh, meteorological agencies, then we can provide uh, further insights uh, for uh, policy. No? Uh, for instance, uh, insights for agriculture and, uh, and, and livestock planning. So what can be done in terms uh, when we have uh, drought periods? No? So how we can better prevent uh, what can happen in, in, in drought periods. And also this information can uh, give us some, some hints on uh, how to do uh, managed aquifer recharge schemes. So for instance, we have seen that uh, when we have uh, La Nina years, so there's more rain, uh, and this means, okay, so let's uh, try to, to, to have some managed aquifer uh, recharge schemes during uh, La, La Nina years. And not only La Nina years, but also uh, considering 
what can happen and what is what is the the the, the phase uh, in terms of other uh, climate uh, indices such as the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation index. And I guess that uh, with this, I, I came to, to the end of uh, my, my presentation. Uh, well, I just wanted to, to give a, a big thanks to the, the colleagues that are, are listed there, uh, because uh, most of the, the, the work and the results that we could uh, have here uh, were uh, thanks to, to, to their support. No? So, well, with this, um, I came to the end of my presentation. Uh, please feel free to, to ask any questions you might have, because uh, I guess um, maybe sometimes I, I, I went uh, a bit uh, fast through the different points.